Fire. We bring you fire. Okay. I am the god of hellfire, and I bring you... Irish car bombs. Uh. You're listening to That's Life, the podcast designed with your laughter in mind. So please, sit back, relax, and prepare to be entertained. That's life, and we're back. Okay, we are Holy back. Oh, shit, episode 57, our St. Patrick's Day, St. Patty's Day. St. Patrick's Day, Extravaganza. super epic hungover episode. He celebrated St. Patty's Day like, like, like a, a lot of people Like a proper do. Irishman. He got completely pissed. Oh, and it was it was bad. <laughs> How is it? You know, you're, you're hungover when you wake up in, a, in your own vomit. Yeah. Yeah, that'll definitely. Yeah. It, it, oh, dude, it was, there was so much. I was like... <laughs> I, and I felt like I had been throwing up all night because, like, every, like all my joints and muscles hurt and everything. You probably were throwing like, up all night. I'm like, man, I partied like a rock star. I was about to say, I Almost damn. died like one. <laughs> Pete, that's fucking crazy. Your body's fucking. like, we're just going to keep throwing up till you're dead or this is out of you, one or the other. Yeah, man, it was it was rough. Like, I woke up, fucking air mattress I was laying on is covered in fucking vomit. Oh, an the, air mattress, dude. That, oh, no. Yeah, I felt so bad. My buddy was like, dude, it's okay. Uh, he's oh. like, it's like, you look like shit. Uh, don't worry about it. Go get yourself cleaned up. Because, I mean, like, my whole, all my pants, well, well, yeah, the whole side yeah, is covered yeah, in fucking vomit. Because it doesn't soak in. The place. In fact, you're, you're the low point in that waterproof situation. Yeah, so it all just it sort was, of collects around you. It was rough. Uh, Oh my God! Well, was, at least uh, with an oh uh, fucking Irish car bombs. Oh, water, it was an air all, mattress. You can take it outside and hose it down. Yeah, and uh-huh. it, it was all the mini, the mini pizzas that I had eaten too. I'm like, man, that didn't even get digested. Oh, Holy shit, that's dude. gross. Well, you know, at least you could just press it back into shape. Yeah, and heat it up again if it you want. It's Pizza Hut, so you know, it's pretty much the same. That's how they heat it up. <laughs> they just have their delivery guys eat it and throw it up into a oh, box, baby when bird style or mama bird. Ooh, here you go. Oh, you wanted you wanted pepperoni with that? Hang on. Oh, but, uh, it was a. Well, I mean, let's go to our. Should we just new? do the what's new thing? Let's yeah, do our what's, what's new. new. We should, we're kind of a uh, jumping kind of, all up in. Yeah, it. let's just vomit our way right to yes. it. Yes, right to the center of that air mattress. <laughs> Blah. Beat oh, so you. Gross. What's new with you? Well, apart from waking up in a pool of my own vomit, <clears throat> um, I had a I had a really great time last night. Like I. Tell me the part you remember. I started, well, I started the day. I woke up at like six in the morning. Thank you, first shifter. That is insane. I, w- I wasn't even asleep yet by the time you woke up because I went yeah. to sleep at 6.30. I, uh, my Good body's morning. been conditioned to get up at six now. Like, I'm That's like, Good, awesome. my day off. Uh, you get the whole day. Waking up at six. And so, yeah, so it's like getting up at six. I'm like waiting for the mailman to come because hopefully I'm like, Come on, check. Come on, money. Come on, give me that money. So they they, actually, they they mail the paychecks to you? Oh yeah. So here's uh, there's, there's so much to talk about. So well, let's jump on that. Yeah, Cause, we'll, cause we'll start like, there and then we'll get we'll what? circle back around. So as as a new hire to McLean, um, they told me my first two paychecks would get sent to the facility. After that, they'd mail them to my house, or if I got direct deposit, they would do that. Right. So check the first. I was going to go, because I got to do the whole nine for the direct deposit. I need an account and all that stuff. Oh, yeah, so yeah, I got to yeah. do like the whole thing. But I need to pay car insurance with my first check. And that was basically my whole first check because yeah, it's expensive. Yeah. So I was like, no, whatever. I'll do the next second check. I'll, uh, you know, I'll set everything up and do all that. Yeah, <clears throat> much easier. So uh, <clears throat> this past Thursday, um, all the other guys that got hired right around when I did, were, they had their checks. They're like their first paychecks. They, they, that was their first cycle. So I was like, oh, cool. Checks are here. So I went up front uh-huh. to uh, the lady person. And I was like, hey, did my check come in? She's like, oh, no, only the first one comes here. I was like, oh, you guys said two. They're like, no, no, it's only the first one. I was like, oh, all right. Well, so then it should probably just be, you know, at my house when I get home tonight. And they're like, no, no, no. I'm like, what do you mean? Well, we get paid on Fridays. Right. Well, they mail it from Texas on Friday. I'm like, you gotta be shitting me. So they wouldn't even mail it in a Why way would that they it would even tell you you get paid on Friday if you there's no chance zero exactly zero chance of you receiving that money on Friday. Yeah, it's like that's I'm like uh, I, I'm like uh, why wouldn't why wouldn't they mail it on like Wednesday just so it gets why? there on Friday? Like that would uh, make more sense because clearly they have the checks printed up. Yeah, y'all have them right there. Yeah, most things take two days to be mailed. The average two yeah, days. Yeah, it's it's. I I, I did a lot so of research. So that's Sunday. Yesterday. Sunday, like Sunday is not nothing. So really, your payday is 
Probably it's, Monday. It's going to be Mondays. Yeah. So, I mean, I'm like, well, what the fuck? But if I had, you know, when I get the direct deposit, money will be, be in there. there like Thursday afternoon. Which is cool. <clears throat> which so, is, yeah, yeah, which is super awesome, but I need to get that all done. So I was like, I was like, oh, so that just killed my whole Thursday. On top, oh, yeah. of, on top of all that, I've been, uh, had been, um, not really fighting with the girl all week, but things have been generally miserable because she, uh, because I wanted to do stuff with her yesterday for St. Patrick's Day. Oh yeah, I remember we were we were talking about this the last week. Yeah, so. and she canceled all her plans. Well, Thursday she's like she finally was just like I'm going out. I won't be home. I'm like good, just go have fun, you know, be happy. Yeah, do you? Because I, you know, I don't want you to be miserable anymore. Because really, it's making me miserable too. And yeah, so <laughs> we neither of us need that. Her batteries will be recharged. Yeah, and- so she went to this other party last night, and um, I went to my friend's house, which. Was uh, a lot of fun, from what I recall. (laughs) That's what they tell me. So, uh, so I went to my buddy's house. The first time I met his girlfriend, who is a smoking hot redhead. I was like, (laughs) "Go you!" And I haven't seen my buddy uh, in a long time. Like we haven't hung out in a while, just because of how life goes. And he works for um, Verizon. So his schedule is wonky as shit. Yeah, all over the place. Yeah, and then I didn't have a car for a while and blah, yeah, blah, blah. But now that, you know, my life is starting to get put back together, uh, I was actually able to go down there. And I was I was not feeling well earlier in the day on Saturday. I just was like, had a cough and just felt like head cold. Yeah, I remember seeing that. Thing. And I mean, I still feel like that now, but it's on top of being hungover. So that's great. <laughs> oh man! Yeah, then my buddy goes, "Oh, already building your excuses, huh?" And I'm like, "No." Nah. So I went back to bed for a little bit, watched some Top Gear, woke up and was like, "All right, I'm feeling better." But well, that was the that was the exact post that I read. I had like five seconds to do everything because of all the overtime, and I'm just like, "Oh, look, there's Pete. Oh, he's feeling sick." I'm like, "Did this guy just this guy just say Pete's going to be sick and make an excuse not to party?" No, 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 no. <laughs> Doesn't work like that with Peter. He will be there. Yeah, it's, I needed to get the hell out and see my friends too because that has a, that doesn't happen anywhere near enough for me. It's like as, yeah. as all my friends have grown up, you know, it's like we all had our lives and yeah, went off in different directions. Yeah. So it's really hard for us to all coordinate schedules and see each other. Oh yeah. So you know, we go there and and uh, the girl didn't want to go because she's like, oh, I'm not going to know anybody. Your friends don't seem all that exciting. I'm like, it's going to be the exact same thing that you're going to go do. Because there's going to be beer pong and flip cup and asshole and kings and all that kind of stuff. Yeah, all the fun stuff. It's just that all my friends are mid-20s to 30s. Like, there's not going to be any underage kids there. She she went to some kid's birthday party that was like... Kid's birthday party? It was like a high school thing. Oh, okay. I felt like a kid's kid. No, 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 no. She... No. No. And the, the guy whose birthday it is, cool kid. I like him. I like the people that he lives with. But I don't like uh, half the other guest list that was going to go because... Uh. Oh, one of the one of the chicks is on the uh, puncher in her horse face on site list. Uh-huh. Um, horse face. <laughs> yeah, I don't get to make enough glue factory jokes, so <laughs> she uh, she's taking the brunt of that fucking skanky whore. <laughs> um, <laughs> and uh, one of uh, one of Cass's exes is was probably going to be there because he hangs out with that crew. And oh, so it's like a it, basically a, a recipe for it, yeah. It was a somebody. recipe for me to just be miserable and yeah. it, it, which would ruin a time it, for her. You wouldn't right. really be having fun, and especially after New Year's and that whole debacle that happened. It was at the same house where oh uh, yeah, you got you got drunk and we're just like hey, just being completely belligerent. I'm going to tell people about themselves. La yeah. la la. Yes. Yeah, so, so I was like. I don't want to do that because I have respect for the kid whose party it is. And yeah. I, don't, I don't want to be that guy. Yeah. Bad enough. To, I mean, I always get way too fucking pissed on uh, <laughs> New Year's and, and fuck everything up anyway. Yeah. So that's normal. Like yeah. I'm like, all right, that always happens. But uh, last night I was like, I just want to be with people I like in an environment that's yeah, comfortable chill and out. all that kind of stuff. And I had a blast. Which is awesome. Um, and... Uh, then there were Irish car bombs, and uh, uh, that's the last thing I remember is the second one. I think I had two. Wow. But I was like, I don't want to do them, and then, of course, I got peer pressured. Yeah, come like, on, do it. It's St. Patrick's Day. I made it. Come on. Okay, fine. Yeah, that's look, pretty look. much how it went. And then, <laughs> and then next, yeah, the next, next thing, thing I know, remember. I'm like, I smell like I'm covered in vomit. This Why, the whole right gross. side of my body's digesting itself. This uh, is not good. So that was kind of nasty. Um, hilarious news. 
Okay. Uh, they've been hiring a bunch of people at, at work. Yes. Uh, temps, regular people, because summer's coming and order volume is going to be huge. Oh, yeah. Especially with all the water that everybody drinks or whatever. What do you mean, Pete? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, which, you know, is fine. But uh, so they hired a bunch of these kids, and one of them was a particularly nerdy fella who I was like, this guy, I want to go be his friend. You know, he yeah. seems like he was, the, he must have weighed about 90 pounds soaking wet, glasses, <laughs> you know, shaved head, like real nerdy kid. And uh, so uh, Friday, I got put on the on the little like zone schedule, like where yeah. you're going to be working. I got put in a new spot. I was going to learn new things. So I was all excited. I was well, like, yeah, cool. I get to go like do something new. Yeah, and you know how I am. I like yeah. to learn new stuff. Yeah. At, 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 well, it makes the day go by faster. It makes you more you, you less inclined to be fired or yeah, let right. go or laid off. So. so not half an hour goes by, but the uh, then the team leader goes, hey, Pete, come here. I was like, well, what's up? He goes, hey, I need you to run this section right here. I was like, oh, okay, why? What, dude, go to the bathroom? He's like, no, nah. he broke into tears and quit. I was Aww. like, oh, you're kidding. I was, I was like, no way. He cried. He goes, yeah, man, he was bawling his eyes out. He's like, I, I can't handle oh, it. Oh, my God, Pete, you missed, you missed a perfect Pete moment. <laughs> oh, man. I was like, <laughs> for, for everyone who's listening who might not know what like a Pete moment, um, that's kind of like, like what a coos hound would, would be like. Yeah, this chick showed up, was giving away blowjobs. You'd be like, oh, I missed it. And he's like, oh, this, this menial labor, and this guy, this guy started crying because he couldn't handle the pressure. Yep. So for the rest of the day, that was the whole, all, like everybody uh, was going up to, uh, to the team leader going, go, oh, I can't handle it. I got to go. Yeah. And, I mean, it's like, and so, of course, instantly in my head, first thing I thought to myself was, oh, your, your feelings. feelings. <laughs> so what? His like feelings? He just it's it, you. You could tell that he wasn't going to make it because it's it's not easy. It you know it's it's throwing heavy ass shit for eight it's to ten hours. Industrial shit. Yeah, yeah that's, it's, that's what it is. Yeah, you're picking up heavy ass boxes and you're moving them around. I mean, I feel beat up every single day, but yeah. you know what? I'm a fucking corrugator yeah, so. at, by nature, so yeah. I've been I've been conditioned to be beaten to death. Exactly. And uh, that was one of the things I, I I was telling saying to the other people I was working with. I was like. Man, somebody goes, you, you leave that poor man alone. I'm like, man, uh, <laughs> no, men are supposed to work until they get themselves killed. And then they get up and do it the next day. That's like right. That's what men do. We yeah. fucking bust our asses. And what makes it worse is, you know, so this kid cries, quits, right? There are two old Spanish ladies that didn't uh, quit. Like, uh, uh, one of them's 55 years old, this uh, tiny little Spanish shit. woman that's just doing, like, She's banging it out. I figured if anybody was going to quit, it was going to be this real preppy temp chick that they nope. got. But even she's she just like, through. whatever. I'm like, damn, you fucking got outlasted by yeah, women, dude. Shit. Like old women. Maybe he. <laughs> I, can't. I was like, all it's of us were too just much like, work. It. He, you know, he looked kind of like a, a slender, more slender. Old Joe Jamie. Oh, my goodness. I was like, and I never got to talk to him, but you could tell because he, like, he came in that day, too. Like, yeah. and, the, and the, we have like a. a like a pre-shift meeting sort of thing to yeah. go over what we're going to do that day when the brakes are and blah, blah, yeah. blah. And he, he was sitting down on, on one of the pallets like with his head in his hands and like oh, shaking a little bit. Oh, like, my God. Oh, man. That kid, he looks rough. That's all right. I felt like that the first couple of days, too. Yeah, you'll get so through that's it. That's what I figured. I was like, ah, he'll he'll get through it, but no. Yeah, your testicles supply like survival chemicals. And then like, I'm like, hey, I, I know it sucks. Remember, you're a man. Oh, that's right. Okay. <laughs> I forgot about that. Well, apparently he left his at home. I guess so. Accidentally and everybody was saying that he was like really smart, like real book smart, but kind of no common sense type oh, of person. One of them, boy, I was that like, oh, familiar. well, I would have been his friend, but you know, looks like he instead he needs <laughs> I he needs he a wet needs a nurse hug. more than a yeah, friend. Yeah, something. <laughs> I tried to be more independent. I just need a lot of <laughs> help. Oh my god, get the fuck out of my control room. And I mean, and that was, uh, and I'm like. Dude, I got because I got stuck on uh, I was like Wednesday I think throwing um, on the on the second floor in the back side is where they keep the uh, one liter Deer Park water cases. Yeah. So there's 18 bottles per case. Oh, right? that's a decent amount of weight. Yeah, right. and as it's getting closer to summer, people are buying more water and they're there's like the stock. Wawas are stocking yeah, up. Yeah, so yeah. each order, literally, like I it's like I shit you not, there's 40 cases per pallet. Jeez. And each order required like one to two pallets worth of water. So, oh, so it was like, like eight hours things. a day of grabbing this 
like it had to be like fifty pounds and putting it on a conveyor for oh, like. Oh yeah, you don't even like, have to worry about working out, dude. That's I, I, you're gonna be. I, fucking, I'm so saying I've already yeah. lost weight. My arms are getting bigger. By like, summer, dude, you're gonna be like, Urgh, yeah, tank top time. Rah, that's that's awesome. Good. And let, because of last night, I found a, a fucking tattoo artist too, so I can. When wearing tank tops, actually oh, you have ink like to show off. Here yeah. and think of there. Okay. Yeah. So, uh, I was, it's been a, get a I tattoo mean, of that kid crying. <laughs> <laughs> There's no crying in warehouse. <laughs> yeah, crying. There's no crying in industrial work. Uh, so bad. That's uh, that's awesome. Well, that's a very exciting. What's new? Yeah. So, I mean, the beginning of the week was kind of miserable. Yeah, but, some uh, crap, it, but it, it got finished better. up good. You know, so that's definitely not got that better. Bad. My week was, uh, let's see, what happened with my... It didn't work out at all because every square inch <laughs> of waking either. time was pretty much spent at working. Work. <laughs> yeah, working or going home and trying to f- just do the things and eat that I had to. I, uh, I, didn't, yeah, I, I didn't fall off the wagon on the dieting, really, but I've been doing like a uh, come home... And uh, do the, the protein shake with the stuff in it. Go work out, come back, finish a shake. And then like right. maybe about 4 o'clock, have a salad or something. Sleeping pills. Zoom. Off you go. Uh, which is, uh, you know, which is nice. It keeps you lighter and stuff like that. Yeah. Uh, it wasn't really so much, uh, wasn't so much what I could do. I, I ended up having like some cheese raviolis, you know, which, which it's still not loaded with meat and shit like that. But I yeah, you guys and I have been trying to eat healthier too. <laughs> the noodles are like uh, they got a lot of there's a lot of carbs in noodles, yeah. and I'm not working out from it, so those carbs, a lot of those are going to get turned into just fucking fat or just whatever, you know. So, but I was like, look, get through this week. Next week, boom, come back hard. I was like, all right, yeah, Sunday, Sunday night, yeah, I'm going to do. I can do a podcast Sunday night, and then like, okay, and I didn't know anything about this that I was going to be on twelves. Uh, we usually, as a professional courtesy, will tell each other when we're taking a vacation. Yeah, we scribble on the on the the the, uh, the calendar we have in the control room, or we just tell each other, "Hey, right. we put on a post it up, so vacation you know. for this day, just to, this week, just so you know, so you you get, know you can get be prepared. ready for your twelves. Yeah. yeah, and if you have kids and babysitting concerns or whatever, it helps you in advance to set shit up as much in advance as possible, which yeah. is just being considerate. It's- well, um, it was Thursday <laughs> when they post the Manning schedule, and uh, you know one of the BT was like, "Hey, they're posting something." Of course, instantly at work, it's like when they post something, it's it's oh great, we're working Saturday. Exactly, it could be that, or it could be even reduced hours occasionally because business is like, "Hey, we've got business." Oh, we don't have business. We got business. Oh, Obama, we got business, and we don't have business. So it's like a whole yeah business. Yeah, they have six month year. And then two or three year plans. That's usually how it goes. You can't do that anymore because you don't know what the fuck's going to happen. You know, your taxes will change. Yep. You know, it's impossible to have a budget. So all of our, it's, it, if it was just us, we could we could swing, we could you know bob and weave, float like a butterfly because we do that in, when we have great work and it makes us really lean and mean. So when business goes to shit, we're just cruising straight through it. Our customers, on the other hand, some of whom have unions, don't have that flexibility. So yeah. they have to adapt in the only way they can, which is, okay, we, uh, we usually have X amount of business, but um, you know we can't put anything in advance. We have to wait till we know we have that order and then place exactly that order right. for that much of that order that we can do in these three days. So business, instead of getting one big Big drop, a big order. We get a that same order split up, bunch of little ones, yeah, broken up, and uh, <clears throat> and then because it's such a tight schedule, we the sort of like okay, you can get away with this quality issue, you can get away with that quality issue. It's not the end of the world. Everything's got to be perfect because they can't spend waste a single second turning their machines over to convert to convert whatever we're sending them. Right. So it's like you know, oh shit. So Thursday something gets posted. They go over, they're like, hey, Carl, you're on three to three. I'm like, the hell am I three to three? Then I get real excited. I'm like, oh, am I three to three like BTU? Oh, boy, that would be great. Because I know that uh, they were trying to split up that overtime. Yeah. Because they didn't want the wedding to get too beat up. So they would like cross train guys in the other departments and stuff like that. I thought, oh, boy, if I get to be in the office. Now, for those of you listening at home, it, it would be like the CEO of a company uh, getting to uh, sweep stuff up for the day. It's so <laughs> yeah, low stress. Much. And it's, it's work. It is work. And it's an important job that it's done right. It's just 
when you get to a certain level at that company, it's just like the most easiest because it's the entry level position. Yeah. You don't have to solve any problems. Yeah. You just go, look, a problem. La, la, la. Chapter three. Anyway, you just read your <laughs> book or whatever it is you're going to do. But it's almost as easy as being a strapper. They said, oh, look. Um, oh, looks like Tim's on vacation next week. I'm like, must be a misprint. He didn't say anything. So, he, you know, he came in that day. I'm like. What, are you going on vacation next week? He's like, oh, yeah. I was like, oh, fucking God damn it. Whatever. <laughs> so, of course, you know, I, that means I have to be there for startup. So it's a six-day week. Yep. But I'm like, you know what? Fuck it. It's a six-day week. Whatever. Fuck it. So I'm there really late on Friday. And then I have a little Saturday. We did a podcast. So I was happy about that. Yep. And then Sunday, I don't get to watch Walking Dead. I didn't get to watch Walking Dead till like, Thursday. <laughs> and I had to watch it in two parts. So and then you had to probably avoid everybody talking about. Oh, it. that was the worst one. Like, nobody fucking say anything about fucking. No, Tuesday rather. Nobody say anything about fucking Walking Dead yet on the air. I can't fucking hear it. So everyone was pretty cool. They managed not to say anything. That's and, pretty good. Uh, and so, uh, and and so I, I I worked from Sunday all the way through Friday. Got done a little early. So I was out of there by like quarter of seven, which is like almost a normal. Like the sun was still up. So I got to come home, cooked some food for everybody. We sat down. And ate. That was kind of cool. And then, uh, of course, Friday I found out that you know, Tim took a safety day also. So you're going to be here this Sunday as well. I was like, oh, you know, <laughs> you mother, two six-day two six work weeks. But whatever, you know, overtime is nice. Like rain in the desert, I call it. You <laughs> see it there, and sure, it looks like a lot of water. Give it a couple minutes. <laughs> it's gone. <laughs> yeah, right. Well, it, that's, uh, it's all disappeared. But... Uh, so I did get to work out, so I have not working out guilt, which sucks. Because then, then like, cause when you're working out and, like, you know, you bend over to pick something up and you're like, oh, there's a little bit, oh, I have a little male muffin top going on. I was like, I don't like that. And when you're working out, you're like, but I'm working out. Ugh, I'm working out. I'm going to kick its ass. When you're not working out, you're like, oh, no, I'm eating waste. So then you have <laughs> eating guilt, all these yeah. neuroses and shit. So by the end of the week, I'm just like, I hate myself. Every time I eat, I'm like a fat, fat, you fat pig. You should throw that <laughs> up. You just, you should, why are you even eating, you fat pig? I'm like, because you have to be healthy. You have to eat. Fuck you. So I'm very happy to be off of that schedule. And uh, we, yeah, uh, nice. thankfully, I got in touch with you yesterday. I was helping uh, my grandma move. Yeah, so I called a... Uh, your house and talk to Kim. Yeah. I she's pre- like, because I was like, oh, it's got to be late enough in the day. Carl should be up. And I was like, hey, what's up? Is Carl there? Oh, well, I was she's up like, all right. actually, no. I'm like, oh, when did he start doing stuff during the day? <laughs> I, after a nice 45-minute ride, which wasn't too bad, uh, I got to just move stuff. Now, the moving wasn't as bad as you think because uh, Grandma fell. So, you know, mm. like uh, <laughs> it was an MST thing where <laughs> this uh, – episode this old elderly guard is showing a younger security guard around <laughs> and you know they pretty much riff on it the whole time they go and these are stairs your <laughs> hips worst enemy <laughs> so that's what i was thinking every time i went up and down the steps she's moving from the second story thing like two doors down literally two doors down into the first story house okay so it wasn't that bad and they just needed help because my dad's back was hurt and my brother's knees were killing him and he was sick so I was like, dude, I have one day off, but I'll be there. Fuck it. You know what uh, I mean? You got you to gotta help. And plus, I, I want my, my girls to say, look, you, know, you, you take care of your elderly family members. So that when I'm elderly, they'll come help my fucking ass. That's right. I feel elderly now. Uh, yeah. So I did that. <laughs> Me too, uh, but I'm blaming that mostly on the hangover. Pretty much all day. Came home. I got to do some gaming last night. And, uh, and then woke up and I, you called. And you're like, I'm so hungover. And I was listening, and I was like, oh, my God. I was like, because uh, you sounded so, uh, Yeah. I was like, exactly if he cancels, I'll totally understand, because he sounds pretty rough. But you're like, no, fuck it, let's do it. I'm like, yes, super. That's on. And that brings us up to now. Yay. Yippee. We have, of course, our weird news segment. That's right. <laughs> Good job, Carl. Oh, I pronounced two words correctly. <laughs> well, more like you use the proper two words. Yeah, and we have uh, a uh, our an okay or not okay segment here. Uh, this week we will be doing the Mormon religion. You know, it's funny when we do these okay or not okay religion type mm-hmm. of things. Like for the most part, all the ideas are pretty much okay. Yeah, it's just that 
the people that implement these ideas are idiots. Are, are pretty well. This one is, uh, as I recall, because I had this slated for episode thirty-seven, if you can believe it. <laughs> but that was a crowded episode, so I'd set it aside. And every week I'd be like, "Whoa, what are we gonna do?" I'm like, "Oh, what's new? Oh, I'm gonna do this segment. I'll do that segment." So I would, and I'd come out here and I'd see it and go, "Oh, I'll do that next thing." So <laughs> I remembered it this time. Hey, there you go. All right, here we have. This is okay or not okay? This is our segment where we review a uh, religion or last time it was man law. Yep. Just something, some which is a common set of ideals. Yeah, or beliefs. and we decide whether or not it is okay or not okay. So Mormons, they uh, number Magic one, Magic underpants. They uh, <laughs> don't worry, it's in there. <laughs> they uh, they pay ten percent. You you will you must pay ten percent of your gross income. That's before taxes, right? Uh, tithing. It's called tithing. Yep. Uh, in addition, you contribute extra amounts to various church funds, such as a fast offering, a missionary fund, which is I checked has nothing to do with missionary position. Uh, <laughs> no, it actually has to do with going out and, uh, and bothering people about your bullshit. Yeah. Uh, and a building fund. So whenever there's like a fund that comes up, they have to, they have to contribute to that. Huh. That's... Which kind of sucks, but... <laughs> so, th- so they're the most unionized of the religions. Yeah, but if you, it, it is like that. If you build or if you're in a shitty situation, you could say, oh, I lost my job. They'll be like, we'll take care of you. Yeah. Uh, so, I mean, as long as it's... I mean, and most uh, most religions have that t- uh, 10% tithing thing. It's just not like mandatory. It's just that, yeah. you know... It's just just a good idea. It. Yeah, you, and most people that are into that kind of stuff want to help out their. their well, it's voluntary. You know, that's yeah. the thing. As much as I'm like, you know, religion retards the intellectual progress of man, which it does. It, it's voluntary. Yeah, and as long as you're not corrupting a young mind, and it's an adult saying, "I really believe in magic underwear," then it's your fucking retarded ass choice. Yep. That as is long as you're not fucking you. with anyone else, right on. And anytime someone tells me that. But we have to have taxes and a government and guns and people and jails because if you don't have that, then no one will feed the poor because no one will contribute willingly to something they believe in. Well, yeah, I guess uh, you're right. That would yeah. never work. Nope. Where has that ever worked out before? Oh, I don't know. Maybe the Catholic Church, which, <laughs> is, which has survived countries that have come and gone. Yeah, Governments right? have come They've and gone. for millennia. Church? Still fuck. They even got a new pope for fuck's sake. So. Yep. You know, uh, it can work, and they do it without guns. Just guilt, which is uh, not really my bag, but whatever. Right, yeah. (laughs) Guilt guilt, guilt doesn't work on me uh, unless, you know, I really, like, would feel guilty naturally. Like, we're like, someone tries to make me feel guilty. Like, when I was single, someone actually tried to make me feel guilty because on Easter, it started by accident, but every Easter, I would have sex with two women at the same time. It happened by accident one year because an ex, my ex girlfriend had stopped over, and then like decided she was just going to spend the night. And I was like, okay, booty call, kind of weird. And this other dude had brought his ex girlfriend over specifically so I would fuck her, <laughs> and, and that's what he told me. And I'm like, if you bring her over here, I'm going to fuck her. So to fuck her, I'm going to fuck her. If you're like, I'm not cool with that, I'm not comfortable with that. I got an ex girlfriend in the bedroom. I'll just go fuck her, dude. It's cool. And he's like, no, no, because he had his girlfriend there. Um, so I'm like, okay, sure, whatever. So, you know, we're there, everyone else leaves, and it's just me and the ex-girlfriend, so I fuck her in the bathroom. And then, you know, she leaves, like you do, and yeah, so right. I shower, and then I go to bed, and then I fuck my ex-girlfriend. <laughs> and, uh, and that was cool. So I was like, two girls, and I was like, I had to up the ante next Easter. Right. Next Easter, actually, it was that, that uh, first chick I fucked, and then her friend, and who actually was going out with that other guy. Funny story. <laughs> not, not at the time. Not right, at the right. time. This is a whole year afterwards. And then we fucked on Easter. And then the next year it was uh, another friend of hers. And, that, and uh, the, no, the other girl left. So it was just another friend of hers and her. And then we fucked again on that Easter. So it was like a little tradition. And then someone actually tried to make me feel guilty about that. <laughs> I'm like, fuck, are you stupid? Are, are, you, re- are you retarded? Are you, yeah. I always Look, ask that. Are you, you never go retarded? full retard. Yeah, you, don't, you never go full retard, man. So <laughs> You can't make me feel guilty for having sex with two women at the same time. What are you, stupid? That doesn't work. Uh, yeah, no. It could never work, it's, ever. There should be high fives, not, not guilt yeah. trips. I'll, I'll never. You just jelly, bro. Oh, monkeys. Uh, this next one is, ooh, this is kind of weird. <laughs> Do not question Mormon authority. Mormons are taught that when their prophet speaks, it is coming directly from God. They are told that when the prophet speaks, the thinking has already been done. Members are expected to obey whatever they are told without any hesitation or skepticism. 
<sighs> brainwashy. Yeah, that's that's, that's, that's not kinda okay. not okay. That, that's definitely not okay. That's that's not okay. No. Because it's not cool, man. It's not cool. Especially if you're like you put in like say you've been a Mormon for a decade. You've been putting in all that money for a decade. And oh, you just lost your job. So you're kind of relying on the church to keep you afloat now until you get another job. Right. Especially places like what's it, Salt Lock, Salt, Salt, Salt Lake, Lake City, City. Yeah, in Utah. Where they pretty much own everything. You know, yep. you're you you're fucked. So that's not really cool. Yeah, not really no, cool. That's not at so all. great. So I'm gonna have to say uh, not okay. Gonna have to definitely go with the not okay yeah. on that one. Uh, number uh, the next one. Uh, once you attend the temple for the. <laughs> Once you attend the temple for the first time, you will begin wearing the special underwear called the garments. <laughs> it just sounds like something Julian would say. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You wear the garments, <laughs> um, which you must wear all day and all night. You can take them off to bathe and for fucking. But then you have to put them right back on, like instantly. Like you're done fucking, you pull out of the bitch. Hurry, get an or hurry. Like there's radiation or something. You never know. I mean, um, I'm gonna. I want to know actually. That's I don't know if that's okay or not okay, but it's hilarious. Yeah, I, <laughs> we need a third option, which is just plain retarded. <laughs> I want to know what they actually like. What they actually look like if they're oh, like I've seen boxers. Them. Yeah, I've, I've, I've they look like them. a pair know. of long johns. Very plain long johns, okay, with a a, 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 big, a, fl- a fly for you know, and a and a flap for pooping. And, a door. <laughs> and um, they have on each nipple, they have these these downward pointing things. Think of like a you know the Mason symbol, yeah, downward, upward, and then there's a little thing. They have one here, one here, and it's one right over the junk. Huh. Yes, and that's supposed to keep them uh, safe from Pure bullets, or fire, poison, oh. plane crashes. There's, it's so fucking the the military. If you are a Mormon and you're in the military, you are allowed to wear that under your uniform. And the military is like, you know, you, they completely debase you as an individual because they're trying to turn you into a soldier. Right. But they will allow you to wear the magic underwear. Right. Well, I mean, that goes with that whole freedom of religion thing. Well, yeah. Which, you know, that's. But you really? give up a lot of that freedom, though, yeah. to join the military. And Mormonism, apparently, since you well, basically you, don't think. Yeah, you don't think, and you wear magic underwear. Pretty, it's pretty weird. Yeah, I'm uh, gonna have I'm to gonna say, say I would say that's okay. It's though, okay. It's because definitely it's okay. still. I mean, it's still your choice to get involved in that. Yeah, you know what I mean. At that point, you're in. You want to? It's it, it any any of any of this inflicted on a child. I would have to say is not okay. Yeah, as long as it's a voluntary. I mean, e- even if it's your child, you have a right to raise them however you want to, but. Just ethically, it's not okay. Legally, it is okay. But ethically, you, know, you probably shouldn't be inflicting your mind with this garbage because that's – you shouldn't be inflicting any mind with this garbage. But it's just <laughs> – well, it's, kind of, it's, like fucking, it's like fucking gelding somebody when they're born. It's just yep. – it's terrible. Uh, okay. We have a, a Mormons pledge allegiance. They pledge allegiance to wearing that sacred underwear in their temples. So like as you would pledge allegiance to a flag. Oh, uh, okay. So weird – yeah, but I guess okay. Uh, t- again, b- connected to the whole, you're making that choice. Yeah, it's once again, it's a so, free choice yeah. as long as they're not forcing anybody to do it with violence or any kind of veiled violence, any form of violence whatsoever. Then and not really too many violent Mormons. They oh, seem- oh, you, yeah, you want to make a bet? Not so, that I've seen. I'm just violence saying. is not just a physical violence. It's also um, like the like the Amish. You're like, oh, the Amish, the Amish, the Amish. But then they, they do this thing called the shunning that you don't really know about where someone's like, okay, well, look, you know, I'm a family member. I've done my Roma Spunka where they run around you know, and live normal lives for like Just a year. To check it out. Yeah, yeah, to check it out to be sure they want to commit, which actually which makes I sense. think is good. Yeah, yeah that that's, makes a, sense. that's a pretty cool idea. And, but then if they decide, okay, this isn't for me, instead of just like, okay, well... You know, well then you can stay here till you no, move they, on. They get instantly they get shunned. Like the, they get the they get the wharf Klingon fucking ritual where they fucking turn their backs on them and they get thrown out of the fucking house and they're on they have nothing. Their parents don't give them anything. They have yeah. the clothes that they have on their back and they're out the door. And that's that's kind of fucked. That's kind of fucked up. That's yeah. fucked up. But, I uh, see what you're saying about yeah. So yeah. it doesn't have to actually be violence, uh, yeah. physical violence. It's it's sort of like a causing harm to people in 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 a financial way, right? Um, or, 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 or even kind of like an emotionally emotional way, abusive sort of. type yeah. of thing. Yeah, I, I see what you're, fucked where up. You're, so, what you mean with that? Yeah. yeah. 
it, it's that it's it, not, okay. It violates <laughs> that magical non-aggression principle, which we uh, which is really what every ethical person lives by. The don't harm anybody except in self-defense. Self-defense, you are totally clear to do whatever you need to do. Defend right. yourself, your property, your family. But outside that, just don't steal from people because that's violence. Don't enslave people. Don't rape people. Uh, voluntary transactions. You can't go wrong with that. Uh, let's see. Uh, Temple Mormons view their sacred underwear with spiritual significance, but we already covered that one. Right. Explain right. what it is. Well, again, okay, just fucking weird. Yeah. Okay <laughs> or not okay, or we'll put weird in as well. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> Protection from evil and blessings is conditioned on them wearing their sacred underwear. Okay. So it seems to be very much revolving around okay. that. Okay. Uh, oh, dude, the, the sacred, sacred underwear. Garments. You hear people joke about it, but I didn't, it's yeah, a I didn't big part about it. Oh, thing. dude, it's fucking huge. Like, you can't even buy sacred underwear um, except through, uh, you have to have a special license from the church to get it. And oh, they okay. will not sell it to you if they think you're like, might be leaving the church or and if you're if you're like a guy that's in the church, you're like, oh, I'm hard up for times. And someone gets a whole, not outside the church gets a hold of your magic underwear, then you you they drop the fucking hammer on you big time. Huh. Because but thanks to the internet, like you can get them on like eBay and stuff like that. And that's how that's how we know what they look like even because hmm. because of a somebody somehow got a hold of them maybe through an estate sale or something. Some of them slipped through the cracks. <laughs> and. Uh, would it be weird if Mormon underwear was like like a pair of thongs? Yeah. <laughs> Just like real provocative fishnet stockings. That would be funny. That'd be kind of hot with the multiple wives thing. Hey, there you go. Uh, okay. Yeah, uh, yeah, but of course it's for everybody, so you know everybody's wearing that. Yeah. <laughs> okay, that's kind of weird. Gross. Um, but they are allowed. I this actually this is new. they they can remove their sacred underwear when they swim. Totally. Probably like from back from where they were like made of thick wool. Yeah. You might drown. Yeah. And then they would be proved <laughs> that it's all bullshit. They don't protect you from harm. So they're like, oh, God just spoke. You're allowed to not wear them when you swim. Yep. Um, Makes sense. <laughs> <laughs> let's see. They, uh, now, a couple of things that sacred underwear do, they, they, they say it helps keep you modest so magically. Well, you know. Weird, but When okay. you're wearing sacred underwear like that, you kind of have to be. I yeah. Guess. Um, they're reminded of the sacred covenants through the underwear because of those marks. Right. And, of course, they, they, they protect you from being tempted and from evil. Aha. Uh -huh. It sounds like some someone who's drunk and this is like making this up as they went along. <laughs> um, okay. So somebody else had some car bombs. It was like, I got a great idea. S speaking Second of car step. bombs, no smoking. Yep. No alcohol. None. Nada. Nil. Cough syrup, nothing. Not even a little bit. No rum cake, eh -eh. no alcohol, no coffee, not even decaf coffee, no coffee, huh? That's a no tea, no tea. Now just getting out of hand here. Not even green leaf tea. So uh, I'm gonna have to say voluntary. So I guess it's okay. Yeah, I but mean, I, it's retarded. It's, it's not. <laughs> Can't the, agree with that, sir. This is this is weird. Get it, you have to get married early. You have to get married early. Oh. No sex before marriage and no living oh. together. Well, that's, that's, I mean, apart from having to get married early, you know, that's pretty much how the religious folk do it. Like yes. No sex before well, it's marriage. controlling that. It's trying to control that impulse. It's, right. It's, it's, it's Which the is dumb. Yeah. Well, they. Again, and also voluntary, fine, but don't force that on kids because, especially teenagers, because oh, yeah. step one is, uh, you know, you tell teens not to fuck and that's what they're going to well, go no, do. Well, no, like you get married when you're a teenager. Oh, I see. And and what's worse is that because of the the polygamy shit, like people would have daughters. Obviously, you're gonna have fucking like ten to twenty daughters because you have like fucking three or four wives. Right. And uh, so you would actually, they would marry like older members of the church because you want to curry favor with the church elders because right. So you, you can't argue with anything they say. So you're marry like marry off their daughter. Here's my twelve year old daughter. Yeah, that's, that's going to be filed. Solidly under the not okay. Yeah, that's definitely not cool. That goes that goes way into the not. I I would be I would happily disqualify your entire religion based on that. Yep. Sorry, you're a fucking scumbag. <laughs> and and well, it's the same problem I have with fucking Catholics. Is is yeah. uh, is like you know you're going to wear the uniform of a Catholic. It's like I like to dress up as a Nazi. I realize that they killed millions of people. 
But I like I like you know the way they're really into discipline and order, and they always oh, keep a neat house. So I'm going to dress like a Nazi, and that's cool, right? <laughs> no, people are going to treat you like a fucking Nazi. Yeah. You dress like a Nazi, you're a fucking Nazi. There's a I was dress like a Catholic. You're into you're supporting pedophilia, and if you dress like a Mormon, you support this shit. Romney. Which is still pedophilia. Which is still fucking pedophilia. What is uh, it with pedophilia and religions, Pete? I again, like it's you try and can, you know put a clamp on those animal I- impulses, and it's just all everything goes to shit. Yeah, pretty much. Speaking of Nazis, I was dicking around on Netflix yesterday, and there's a movie. That Iron th- Skies. Nazis on the moon. Yeah, yeah. Yes, Iron Skies. I didn't watch it yet, but I read the description. I was like, they took our moon raper idea. Yes. <laughs> What the fuck? <laughs> yes, they did. And uh, it's in my Netflix Insta queue. Because I saw that, I was like, holy shit. Yeah. They uh, took <laughs> fucking the Moon Raper thing. <laughs> what the fuck? Yeah, I saw that and I was like, I got to tell Carl about this. I don't know if it's good, but I want to watch it now. Yeah, how the hell? They, instead of our Arabian terrorists and Saddam Hussein. <laughs> they, uh, it's even worse. It's fucking Nazis. They use Nazis. What the fuck? Yeah. Yeah, at least I was inventive. They went for like the stock villains. Yeah, they, you know. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Sorry. Um, yeah, you have to have children right after you're married, and you have to have lots of children. Uh, not having the financial resources to properly take care of your children is considered an excuse and is invalid. So it doesn't matter wow. if you're dirt poor, you need to be constantly cranking out kids. That's kind of. Wow, I'm going to have to abusive. put that under not okay. It's not okay for yeah. anybody. Because that's. That falls. I mean, that's also falls under child abuse. Yeah, right that's not really cool. Especially if the wife is like fucking 13 and shit. Yeah, that's exceptionally not cool. Yeah. Especially if all of your wives are like 13. That's really not cool. No, that, that's very not okay. Uh, but multiple wives. Now, that's something that's not condoned by the standard, by, by the Mormon church proper. It was at one point. Right, but it was one of the reasons that uh, they sent the, mili- the United States military against them. There was actually a war, believe it or not. Huh. That's how they ended up in Salt Lake City. There was actually a war because the Mormons, uh, the, this one neighboring town, didn't like what the Mormons were doing because, well, they it's were kind of fucked up. They were shysty, and John Smith was shysty and weird and a yeah. con artist yeah. and a fucking lo- a lunatic. And so they were they were fighting back and forth, and then the Mormons wiped out the whole fucking town. They killed them, all of them. So then the government was like, what the fuck? So then the, you know, because news traveled. took them. So the yeah. government got the army and then wiped out almost the entire Mormon town. Men, women, children, they killed them. So then the Mormons ran away because the Mormons were like, we're, these are our plan. We're going to take over the state. So the Mormons ran as far as they could because all of a sudden they're like, oh, God told us we have to leave. Yeah, yeah right. <laughs> It's like, God and all these bullets. But these mag- the magic underwear are protecting us against the bullets. It's because you sinned. Come on, we have to leave. Yeah, right. It's because you're trying to stay. No, I didn't even know we were supposed to leave. You're arguing with me. Oh, I forgot. <laughs> so, um, so they went a long ways across the desert. Lots of people died. And then that's, when, that's how they got Salt Lake City. Right. In the middle of like next to a dead lake. And they're like, all right, we'll live here because they would probably die if they tried to catch us. And because of the way they're like, have 100,000 children, everyone take care of each other. Yeah, brought that population. Yeah, right back the, up. the population grew and expanded through the state. And that's how they ended up taking control of fucking Utah. Pretty gay. Um, okay, yeah. let's see what we have here. We have now, now it gets really weird, Pete. Oh, now it gets weird. All right. Uh huh. <laughs> um, okay, as far back as 1837, Joseph Smith said that the moon was inhabited. Uh, 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 touching on our iron skies. He didn't okay. say with uh, Nazis, though. Oh, he described well. the men averaging nearly six feet in height and dressing quite uniformly in something near the Quaker style. What was that about not Nazis? I don't know. Uh, <laughs> so, uh, okay. Quaker Nazis. Um, it's oatmeal and... <laughs> I would have to say, if he was just telling adults about this, it would be okay, but they teach it to kids, and you're it's... teaching lies to children, and that... that in that regard, it's not okay. It, it's yeah. definitely retarded, though. It's it's mostly retarded. It's it's not okay because it's retarded. Yes, <laughs> pretty much everything that rolled out of Joseph Smith's head was fucking retarded. Yeah, that guy's a fucking nut job. Any questions about it? Watch the South Park episode where they they don't even embellish the Mormon teachings. Yep, they just show you them, and uh, you will be shocked. It's shock and awe. If you ever <laughs> want to be left spellbound, it's it, it's pretty retarded. 
Uh, apparently, they found out where God lives, OP. Oh, all right. God lives on a planet near the star Kolob. This is starting to... Sound like Scientology? Get a little... T- so, yeah, yeah. <laughs> this is going into... The, I told you it was going to get weird. All right. Okay. Um, Jesus Christ was conceived by God by having sex with Mary, uh, who was, for the night, temporarily his wife, because God does, can't sin, so they had to tack that shit on him. Right, naturally. Thankfully, Joseph Smith covered up that loophole in the right. Bible. You know, well, that was the one thing that's wrong in the Bible. The rest, perfect sense, Pete. Perfect sense. Talking snake, that's fine, sure. Uh, oh, this, is, uh, <laughs> this one's going to have to get filed way in the not okay category. <laughs> right. Dark skin is a curse from God. Oh, wow. The result of our sin or the sins of our ancestors. If sufficiently righteous, a dark skinned person will become light skinned. Wow. That's so far in the not okay wow. category. Wow, that's unbelievably ridiculous. Wow. Well, we have to tell. Um, I guess Michael Jackson was one righteous motherfucker. Yeah, I, I guess so. Um, oh, and they found the Garden of Eden. It's in Missouri. All right. So if you ever want to know, go someplace on a vacation and see the Garden of Eden with a talking snake and an apple you could eat <laughs> and make it really smart, uh, go to Missouri and ask to see the Garden of Eden. <laughs> Show up at the border. Uh, excuse me. And, uh, I would let's like to see the Garden of Eden, Eden please. Right and they'd you. say, you're a fucking Mormon, aren't you? <laughs> <laughs> got the magic underwear. Uh, all right. We got three more bullet points here, which just get weirder and weirder. Christ will not return to Earth in any year that has seen a rainbow. So, so, so this is where Joseph Smith. Now he's really just making shit up. He's out there in the desert smoking peyote, coming up like with I these said, fucking rules. He's one of those. He's like a fucking used car salesman that no one else believed, but he found the dumbest people in the world to follow him. Well, I mean, so he it's believed the same, this shit. It, honestly, it's really the same idea behind most religions, but it's yeah. very Scientology. Was, very uh, Scientology. Was that, uh, was that, it wasn't Carl Sagan, was it? No. Pete, you're hungover, so I'm going to forgive yeah, you for just, saying that. It was L. Ron Hubbard. L. Ron Hubbard, right, L. right, right. L. Ron Hubbard, science fiction author, and wacko. Carl Sagan, a brilliant point of light you know, of humanity because uh, he was an atheist, and he was... A humanist, he believed in humanity. Carl, look up Carl Sagan, everybody. He's awesome. Yeah. Um, well, I heard that uh, Scientology was created uh, uh, on a bet. On a bet that <laughs> that it was between L. Ron Hubbard and another author. So I uh, bet I can come up with a retarded religion. And everyone will follow it. Yeah, it was it was between these two sci-fi writers who were who were like whoever can start a religion, like wins the bet. Yeah. And that's I. Well, I'd say he fucking won. Big yeah, time. that's that's how I hear how it happened. Any <laughs> doubt? Just just Google Tom Cruise weirdness, and uh, you'll see it all. Uh, yeah, I watched the uh, Inside the Actor Studio with Tom Cruise. Yeah, really interesting. Like, you yeah. know, the, the, it was really cool. Just up until the end when he got all like Scientology-ish. Scientology you know? like, yeah, he really believes that fucking bullshit. A lot of people do, and it's just like. Uh, you, you realize that even other crazy religious people think your shit is bullshit. Yeah, and that's when people who do believe in a burning bush talking to you think that your religion's fucking. What sacred underwear people think you're full of shit. Yeah, that's it's that's time to rethink it. Yeah. Maybe you should just use common sense. I don't know. Uh, Mormons should avoid traveling on water because Satan <laughs> rules the water. So, so just go <laughs> ahead, Pete. Yeah, it's so retarded. Wow, all right. Jesus walked on it, but let's not even go there, I guess. And here it is. Here it is, Pete. This is, uh, this is, this is incredible. Cause, because it, sh- <laughs> it shows not just such a shocking lack of understanding of basic science, <laughs> but okay. also That's common fucking sense. The sun receives its light from the star Kolob. I thought it was a planet. The sun receives its light from the star. No, no, God lives on a planet near the star Kolob. Oh, oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, so otherwise, they have perfect sense. Yeah, all right. So it receives its light. <coughs> it outsources. I don't know. <laughs> it's star, there's the star, and there's the sun. See, the so light from that I star reflects the off sun the sun. The sun must be a giant mirror. But even if it was a giant mirror, wouldn't it, and, it was bright, and the light reflected from it was that bright, and there it is right there. Wouldn't that the star be brighter than the sun, since it's because it's? I, it's, I can't. I don't, I don't even think in a in a more or less hungover way I'd be able to wrap my brain around that retardedness. I just, 
What? The sun gets its light. Like there's like. <laughs> I just watched a bunch of uh, StarCraft playthroughs, so I'm picturing like little fucking Zerg drones bringing light back and forth from the start <laughs> from the of the stars, sun. Yeah. Oh. oh, spawn more oh. overlords. Uh, yeah, so I, I just finished the StarCraft. I finished the new StarCraft Heart of the Swarm. I'll, this will be my belated what's new because I forgot about this. <laughs> uh, Looked cool. It was, what I saw. It was a horrendous letdown. It, it was a huge letdown. I heard I, it was awfully predictable. I it was such a letdown. Com- they they really set the bar high with um, Wings of Liberty because it was so good. Everything about it, it was so smooth. Uh, the gameplay was so good. The single play, the, the campaign, the story in it, yeah, was just was fucking awesome, dude. It was fucking dude. If it was a movie, it would be fucking. It'd be it would be like as. Popular Star Wars, the real Star Wars, right? You know, it would be that <laughs> level of awesome because it and, and it had a great voice acting in it, terrific writing, like like the characters you get pulled in on. On the it was great. This one, no, not at all, not even remotely. It really felt <laughs> like they were just pulling shit out of their ass the entire time. Well, Diablo three, I I don't even. I, 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 I was disappointed. And they changed stuff in the gameplay. Some of it is good. Some of it is not so good. You used to be able to command troops to hold position. Yeah. You can't do that anymore. Oh, that's you have weird. You have two commands. Right click and whatever special functions. Like, like a... If a lurker, like a lurker, buries itself, right. you have that. You, you can bury it and then it, then it will do its attack. But I mean, you don't have any other commands. Like, there's no go to. There's no patrol. There's no patrol. Like, huh. you used to be able to have them patrol yeah. between two points. Yeah. No, none of that. None huh. of that. I, I'll, yeah, the only thing. You know, it's funny you say that because I was watching the, the playthrough. The only thing they have, it looked like that they kept kind of the same, even from the first game, was the setting a waypoint for when you spawn stuff. Yeah, you could do that. They go that's to it. a certain place, but yeah, that's it. Yeah, and they made the control groups bigger. Well, you, and you Which also you have a there. There is some good. You can select all of your units. Yeah, like can't you every like double military unit? One of them, and it selects them all or whatever. <clears throat> well, that that was in all of them, but there's a special oh. button. You, it's you can hit F two as well. Where if you click it, it at all military units, no matter where they are on the screen, everyone you have created is activated. Oh, okay. So if you have to like, if you have an all in moment, you can like bring everything back to your high for defense. I gotcha. Which is handy. Except in some of the single player missions where you have two groups completely set apart and there's all these enemies in between. Yeah. And like to the point where you can only contr- you you can only control the one group during the other group. I don't know if it was a bug or something, but you ended up controlling all of them and pulling them all the way across. Which it seemed awfully uh There were bugs in it, dude. There were fucking bugs in it. There were bugs blizzard release buggy shit. Fucking Carrigan in some of the, the cut the cutscenes. Yeah. She says something, and it's like it's like the first thing she says just repeats, and the rest of the dialogue continues, and she just keeps repeating that over and over. That just keeps huh. repeating. It was buggy. It was uh, it, it it the single player story was not compelling at all. I wasn't real like it was at great to all. look at. They uh, like they graphically it was cool. Yeah, but no, I, yeah. I was really like Kerrigan <clears throat> seemed so cheesy because I I watched the first. Yeah, that's a, yeah. Kerrigan was a cheesy. I watched the first like a couple of missions character. when uh when she you know like the training mission when she blows up the facility. That the, that's then, actually where I started getting a feeling like something seems wrong here. Yeah, because the guy I was watching play goes, "What do you what it." What are you? Do? Why are you being so evil, Carrick? What is going on here? Yeah, she, and then she's just like, "Ah, oh, yeah, I taught you a lesson." Okay, I'm like I was expecting her to just go batshit crazy and be like, "No, fuck all y'all." Yeah, that would kind of make sense, or have something where they kept her too close to the Zerg and unlocked her, the Queen of Laziness. Yeah, it just and then there's this whole primal Zerg thing, and then it's just the whole thing. I'm gonna mean, get revenge against Minsk. He told me that that Jim is dead. So now I'm going to have to become the Queen of Blades again so I can avenge him. Oh, Jim's alive. He had him the whole time. So wait, the bad guy who's lied to you constantly tells you that the only man you love is dead. And, but then later she's like, I need to contact Jim. Jim Raynor. I know he's here. I can sense him. Wait a minute. 
You can sense him now. <laughs> yeah, right? Where which, was that before? Yeah, but you'll just totally community. take the word of this bad guy. And, and Jim Rader's character was there, but he was, he was just tacked on. He was just there basically as a, as a piece, a playing piece for this shit, shitty story. I was disappointed. And, and <laughs> Blizzard, for whatever, whatever other problems I might have with their games are usually trivial. Their story is usually really good. Yeah, that's, and that's usually... You know, they start falling off in Cataclysm because they went the goofy route with a lot of their shit. <laughs> Goblins. <laughs> and then, but they came back with decent story with pandas, which I still can't believe, but it's true. Yeah, you know, it's funny because uh, as, as much shit as everybody went, like as, as much of a shit fit as everybody threw about the whole Miss of Pandaria thing, it's... One of the better expansions. Yeah, it's it's no Wrath of the Lich King, but yeah, it's it's, it's it, I think it's better than a uh, Cataclysm. It's better. It is better than Cataclysm. Yeah. The, my only issue with it is that there's just so much to do. Like, oh yeah, yeah once yeah, you hit yeah. max level, it's yeah. kind of it's you're just you'll, you'll never get everything you want to do done in one sitting in one day one 24 hour period is impossible, which is nice because it leaves you a lot to do, so you won't get bored. In between, yeah. you know, fucking there's, new material. There's, there's tons of stuff to do. <clears throat> and they're pushing out content a lot faster now, yeah. too. 5.2 just went live, and it's like, damn. But I really, I understand that one of the big th- selling points of StarCraft is the multiplayer. I understand yeah. this. I mean, for the rest of the world, I understand. But they never sacrificed their single-player campaigns, the story. They never yeah, sacrificed it's, it's their story. It's always been really good. That's why a lot of people like me, who I, I as you know, am terrible at RTSs. Yes. Uh, but the story in StarCraft has always been yeah. really good, and that's, you know, sometimes that's why I watch I'll, somebody else play it. So. Yeah, sometimes I'll still re- replay, like, The Wings of Liberty. I, I played through the whole campaign, I think, four or five times because the story's so good. It's just really cool to watch it yeah. unfold and be a part of that. Um. So this did not have it fucking at all. That's not awesome. at all. It that was a fucking huge laugh. And I'm not a hater. I'm I'm a I'm borderline Blizzard fanboy. I but I just I couldn't like this. The, and the more it went on, the more I was like, well, maybe it's just getting warmed up. Yeah. No, the more it just fell apart and became hackneyed and stupid. Yeah, that's kind of like, what I heard I, about it. I don't. I expect better for better for me, <laughs> Blizzard. Better when I can just make shit up off the top of my head right here watching this it's better than what i'm seeing that you who had years and development teams and this is your material couldn't do you have no excuse you yeah, fucking they, fo- you phoned it in the recent changes that blizz has made in their uh some of their teams hasn't been the best <laughs> yeah you got that right and the decision for fucking oh big announcement from blizzard at the P- uh, playstation 4 conference Diablo 3, it's just like, wow. That's yeah, it was so stupid. The biggest letdown ever, Chris Metzen. Yeah, because usually like they'll say, big announcement coming up, and it's like, Wrath of the Lich King well, Everybody, is coming. I mean, yeah, and everybody's expecting like Titan. Titan or the next things. X-Pac they're going to start talking about, whatever it is going to be, the Emerald Dream, whatever. Yeah, we'll never see the Emerald Dream. Yeah, it's like the dance studio. It's not happening. Yeah. But uh, that's like the running joke now. Yep. It's because I think it was like on the box. of. It's it was a, on the box for BC. Yeah. 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 Dance studio or whatever. Yep. It's like, okay. It never came. No. What, what was it? Where's my camel? No, uh, the was a deer mount or a camel mount or something. I can't remember what it was. I don't know. We had, There are camel mounts. Yeah, they do have camel mounts now. So I now. guess it's not that. Oh. They have anyway. camel toe, too. But that brings <laughs> us to Weird News. Weird news. I almost fucked it up, Pete. Did you see that? See I that? saw you thinking about it. I was it. thinking about it. I was like, make sure you... I overthought it, because I'm like, oh, <laughs> no. Uh, weird news, some of which is brought to you by Chuck Shepard's News of Weird.com. A bunch from the smoking gun this week, and some from random sorted APR news sources scattered throughout the internet. We have some fucking hilarious fucked up stories in this shit. <laughs> That's good, because the only like weird news thing that I saw that was noteworthy, sort of, wasn't weird or funny. It was just infuriating about this... Dubingville High School situation. Uh-huh. Uh, a couple of kids fucking drugged up this chick and raped her. And well, that's not weird was, news. That's no, that's, that's why I said it's not weird news. It's it's really bad. And there's like a 12 minute video of them talking about it. And it's a football town. And supposedly that the uh, the like the quarterback. It's his ex girlfriend, and oh uh, he's God. set this up. It looks like like evidence leads people to believe that it was a setup for her breaking up with him or something gay like that and it's like it's a mess but the quarterback guy is not 
be in charge with anything. Like they because he didn't everybody. do it. I I don't know. You, well, you could uh, accessory. There's wherever it is. There's a there's a law about that. If if you're not even an accessory, but if you uh, if you know of of a rape of, happened, of a don't crime do nothing, like that yeah. and don't say anything, you're just as guilty over the. That Which is thing. probably a good idea. <laughs> but so yeah, that's. Not weird or funny. Just, That's uh, terrible. I God. hope these fucking All right, let, we got to wash this out of our... Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, we need some palate cleansers, and I've got it for you. Stat. This one's called Oh Dear. Uh, this was from November 22nd when it's occurred. But it's just so... <laughs> oh, my God. Uh, a Wisconsin man who argued that he could not be prosecuted for having sex with a deer because the animal was dead at the time was dealt a legal setback today <laughs> when a judge rejected a motion seeking dismissal of a criminal charge against him. As a result of circuit court judge Michael Lucci's ruling, defendant Brian James Hathaway, age 20, will have to stand trial for his alleged assault last month of a deer carcass. <laughs> in, his, okay. in his ruling, a copy of which uh, was included with this, but I, I'm not going to read it because it's like boring as fuck. Uh, Lucci <laughs> denied a November 7th motion filed by his lawyer, Frederick Anderson, who argued that the deer ceased being an animal upon its death. Uh, he, now Hathaway had found the carcass in a roadside ditch, so he didn't kill it. He just found a dead deer, and his first thought was, "That's got to put my dick. Got to put a humping on it." Pammy, <laughs> uh, no. Uh, Anderson contended that a charge of sexual gratification with an animal could not be sustained because the term "animal" refers to a living organism, not a carcass. Lucci, however, noted that most people understand that an animal does not necessarily cease being or qualifying as an animal or even being referred to as an animal once it's dead. <laughs> he added that the primary focus of Wisconsin's criminal statute dealing with crimes against sexual morality is on human behavior and on protecting sexual morality in the community, and not necessarily on animal protection. <laughs> wow. That, that's ridiculous. Now, Honestly, they don't have to charge him with anything. I think just making it public should be that enough. That should take care of it, yeah. But if you're trying to stop a guy from fucking humping on dead animals, What's telling everyone about there? it is not going to do it because you'll never hump a living human being again because no one's going to fuck the deer fucker. Yeah, right. The dead deer fucker. Sorry, yeah, sorry right. about that. Oh, yeah. <laughs> this next one's called The Power of Christ Compels You. <laughs> the... Uh, <laughs> The 14 guests at a jewelry party in Lake City, Florida, were initially incredulous that home invader Derek Lee, age 24, meant to rob them. But when they saw that he was serious by pointing his gun to the head of a woman, the hostess went into action. No snap. In the name of Jesus, she shouted, get out of my house now. Then all of the guests started to chant in unison, Jesus, Jesus, <laughs> Jesus, <laughs> Jesus, over and over. <laughs> Lee frightened and bewildered, <laughs> sprinted out of the door empty-handed and was later arrested. <laughs> it was from WJXT wow, TV in Jacksonville, that's Florida. That's pretty awesome. Um, so quick, everybody, just go all crazy pants. Yeah. <laughs> you robbed the wrong motherfucking house. We're going to cult all over you, Jesus. <laughs> I wonder, did they, did they chant it like a Whopper Jr.? Probably. Whopper Jr. Which still, I think, if we could have pulled that off, we would have preserved... That's life in through in infamy throughout history because we that was like one of the footage they always show is when they arrested the baby killer from Florida uh, who why what was her fucking name I can't remember her name now actually oh I Casey Anderson Something or whatever like yeah, yeah I don't remember or, uh, when they arrested her mom at her house we always said it would be funny because the press was all there. If uh, Pete, me, and then Brett were just sitting there going, Whopper Jr., <laughs> Whopper Jr., chanting slowly <laughs> in a very dull tone uh, over and over again, uh, calling back, of course, to the uh, Generation Kill when the one dude accidentally shot a kid. <laughs> and Nick, accidentally uh, on purpose. Yeah, why, why do you keep calling him Whopper Jr.? Like, where do you get Whopper Jr. from? Burger King, where the initials Burger King, BK. Baby killer. <laughs> so it's that kind of marine logic hey, that we wait, just... Wait, they're calling me that? So it's just... It's fucked up. Uh, <laughs> here it is, the crown jewel of our weird news. Move over, double barrel vag story. Uh-oh. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. On March 6th, an Oklahoma woman was arrested on drug charges, and she had a loaded handgun hidden in her vagina, according to police. Wow. 
The weapon was discovered during a search of Christy Dawn Harris, age 28, by a female officer with the uh, Ada Police Department. According to the police report, the police uh, noted, spotted the handle of the five-shot revolver sticking out from inside of Harris. In a less shocking find, investigators also discovered plastic, plastic baggies containing methamphetamine lodged in the crack of her buttocks. <laughs> so before, you, before we could even ask it, Pete, yes, meth was involved. Yeah, it's a hell of a drug. Uh, the Freedom Arms 22 caliber handgun was loaded with three live rounds and one spent shell. What the fuck? Which makes you wonder. Yeah. <laughs> was she out at the range? <laughs> when she gets off, she gets off. Yeah. Uh, That's one way to have safe sex. <laughs> That's very unsafe sex. As to where the weapon was recovered, the police report noted the gun was located in the suspect's vagina. <laughs> At 3.45 a.m. on that on Monday, uh, police spotted Harris and another woman, Jennifer Delancey, inside a vehicle parked outside a closed restaurant. The women were in the front of the vehicle, and both seats were laid all the way back. So they were probably methed out and doing some frisky stuff. Yep. Asked by a police officer if the car asked by a police officer if the car contained weapons or drugs, Harris, who was behind the wheel, answered uh, that she did not think there was anything. But unlike having a couple beers and passing yourself off as sober, it is impossible to pass yourself off as anything other than a meth head yeah. when you're on meth. I think that's half of meth's charm. <laughs> But when a drug dog alerted uh, uh, to both the driver and passenger sides of the Toyota Yaris, uh, police searched the vehicle and found meth, drug paraphernalia, a pistol, and a loaded magazine. Harris and Delancey were then arrested. While being transported to jail, Harris stated several times that she needed to go to the bathroom. <laughs> oh, I bet she did. Uh -huh. uh, at the lockup, Harris was directed to change out of her clothes into jail clothing. When directed to lower her underwear so that a female cop could check for contraband, Harris advised that she was on her period and did not want to. Harris eventually had to comply with the police officer's order. I observed at that time a wooden and metal item sticking out of her vagina, reported Officer Kathy Ubuist, who added that she pulled the item from her vagina. Insert Zerg Hatchery sound here. <laughs> and found it to be a five-shot revolver with rounds in the fucking chamber. Harris is scheduled to be arraigned on felony weapons Gross. and narcotics charges. Wow. And I think the uh, judge will shake her hand. Uh, so, That's... yes, I think we found a story involving a vagina more outrageous than the double barrel badge. Yeah, that is that is pretty ridiculous. Definitely more dangerous. Loaded fucking Loaded fo with a spent round, yeah. which makes you wonder, was she like in the bathroom? Pew! Oh, uh, yeah, you know, I still got four rounds. I'm good. <laughs> <laughs> just, God damn, take some time to reload. Uh, I can just imagine the mess that came out. Just uh, <laughs> yeah, that, that probably would corrode the gun a little bit. Smelled of gun oil and Valtrex. <laughs> um, this next one's called, <laughs> and this has to be read in a Jesse voice. <laughs> uh -huh. You'll the, whole be. Time, the whole time I was thinking of your Jesse impersonation while I was writing this up. <laughs> All right, I got to do this right. Let's say I can read it if you want. Uh, yo, like. <laughs> <laughs> He's having a real hard time getting to this. Yo, like, let's plank on each other. <laughs> For Jesus, yo. <laughs> I told you there's some weird ones in this one. The Planking for Jesus, huh? <laughs> On top of each other. <laughs> the president of the National Black Church Initiative told the uh, Associated Press in January that its pastors are generally free to ordain new pastors as they wish. Right. Seems reasonable. And that consequently, Bishop Wayne Jackson of Detroit did nothing wrong in his ordination ceremony, which was serotypically video recorded and uploaded to YouTube. Even though it consisted of Jackson in robes praying while laying on top of the new bishops who were also praying. The uh, AP uh, noted that uh, Bishop Jackson had been the target of that so gay YouTube comments. <laughs> <laughs> Associated Press, WJBK, TV Detroit. <laughs> Fucking weird motherfuckers this week. Yeah. I just like that the internet instantly had that handled for us. Oh, I gotta love the internet. Like, they're, they're on point sometimes. He's the target of that so gay. No, it's because it fucking was gay. What the oh, fuck, yeah. dude? The fuck? No, it's not gay. It's for Jesus. No, it's still gay. Gay, gay, gay. You're laying on top of other dudes. You know, yeah. that, that's, that's kind of Planking gay. for Jesus. Yeah, planking for Jesus on top of other men. Gross. Oh, shit. 
Um, you all be the cross. You could be crucified on me. So uh, this next one is like Jesus was glistening. <laughs> oh no, that's sacrilegious and disconcerting at the same time. <clears throat> oh, legs. <sighs> Had to stretch yeah, legs. I, ow. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, I stretching doesn't help. It's better to stay coiled up. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's rigor Morris. It, it, rigor Morris. <laughs> My friend, rigor Morris Esquire. <laughs> He's an attorney. Uh, it's rigor mortis. It'll pass. Yeah, I would say it'll pass. Uh, Tim got over it pretty quick. <laughs> he was cranky for a couple hours. <laughs> uh, fuck. Uh, the next one's called Get Webster's Dictionary on the phone. Uh, after an Ohio woman was arrested early yesterday for prostitution. Uh, a police officer patting her down for contraband noticed a hypodermic needle sticking out from her rear pants pocket. Oh, well, at least it wasn't her veg. Yes. After the Dayton Police Department officer retrieved the needle, Brittany Martin, the 24-year-old suspect, revealed that she was in possession of two other syringes. Oh, wow. <laughs> As detailed in an incident report authored by Officer Raymond St. Clair, the woman retrieved them from her, quote, anal cleavage. <laughs> By eschewing the more pedestrian butt crack, Officer St. Clair became the first law enforcement official to include the phrase anal cleavage <laughs> in an official report. Awesome. Martin, charged with prostitution and possession of drug paraphernalia, allegedly was paid $20 by a John for a partial blowjob inside the 63-year-old man's 1996 Pontiac Grand Prix. Partial? See? Yeah. Now, I like how they like mention the anal cleavage, like that's the ground-shattering thing. Partial blowjob? Blow, yeah. Like, Does that mean she just sucks finish? on the bottom of his dick or something? Which actually, the sucking on the underside actually works. I had it done before. <laughs> yeah, I had a procedure done. Yeah. yeah it was, <laughs> that's what it felt like. I'm like, well, I'm not going to say no it's like, because it's her mouth and my dick. Yeah, it's like, uh, it's unorthodox, but it still yeah, feels yeah. good. And she seems to have known what she's, she knows her way around my dick. So I'm going to go ahead and let this happen because, I mean, even if it doesn't work, we can still fuck afterwards. And I was like, well, by Jove, it worked. So uh, yeah, this in our special uh, religious ridiculous section. Oh, uh, one of my favorites. Oh, yes. We have, we have uh, some, some gems in here. This one's called the Muslim Special Olympics. <laughs> <laughs> I like think, it already. Yeah, some things you didn't think would be joined together. <laughs> uh, Saudi cleric Sheikh Abdullah Duad. Oh, I'm sorry, Daoud, in an interview in February on Al Majad television, decreed that female babies should wear full face veils to help shield them from sexual advances. What? (laughs) Muslim Special Olympics. Yo, man. All right, so that's retarded. Yes. It's like, is that really a problem in Arabia? Yeah. It's like, look at that. Look at that baby. God, that baby's so hot. Oh, she wants it. I mean, what the fuck is wrong with you fucking apes, you desert fucking simians? <laughs> if a baby turns you on, you fucking disgusting fucks. Yeah, that's gross. There's something uh. seriously flawed. They're, and the response isn't condemn baby rape. It's cover that baby's face up. What's wrong with you? Yeah. What the fuck, Pete? Uh, dude, again, when <laughs> it's, it's like Ray Person says. They need to work on the pussy infrastructure over there. No, you know, fuck that. We need to work on alternative energy. Because the sooner we can not need their oil, the sooner we can not go to their desert fucking shithole and not be exposed to this fucking insanity. What the fuck? This next one's called yep. Let or Die. Right. In January, in the uh, holy mackerel, lo- <laughs> lo- Loco Sumawaye. Yeah, Loco Sumawaye. City in Indonesia, okay. they drafted new ordinances, including one that prohibits women from riding motorcycles with their legs straddling male drivers, since that would tend to provoke them. The driver, obviously, if you put your legs around the driver and he's trying to, to ride the motorcycle, right. he'll have to stop and rape you. <laughs> which, which they're not worried about the rape thing. They're like, no, that's perfectly understandable. She's a slut, but he could cause an accident and injure himself so the rapist could hurt himself oh and it's the woman's fault of course (laughs) i like that baby up i I like how you mentioned that so it's (laughs) such a cavalier (laughs) of course yes of course it's a slut she deserves like the baby deserves yeah deserves whatever they get put a veil on there so it doesn't get in their eye however gross 
uh, a, a proponent for this said the ban honors women because they are delicate creatures. Immediately, some authorities denounced the legislation, pointing out that riding side saddle is much is much more dangerous in cases of sudden swerves and collisions. Yeah, dude, that throws the whole balance off. Clearly, they've never <laughs> actually ridden motors. This is like the old ass idiots in fucking America trying to make laws about the internet. I don't know what this shit is. Well, get at, out of here. You as of uh, these as guys, clearly have never even seen a motorcycle before. As of pre- well, apparently they're they're perfectly it's perfectly acceptable to rape someone on a motorcycle. Well, and really, if, if you're you gonna, can rape someone on a motorcycle, it's almost points. like good yeah, job. You, you almost want to be like, yeah. well done. Doing it consensually would be difficult enough, but to have to, you know, because she'd have to be. In yeah, front you'd of have you. to rape. You have to be a rape victim wrangler. Rape victim wrangler. You'd have to hold her and balance yourself. That just sounds dangerous. Uh, See, but that's why they made that law, because otherwise, you know, keeping rape is safe. <laughs> Thank heavens. So, uh, Fucking yeah. scumbags. <laughs> yes. Uh, this next uh, one, we have three more left. These are some really weird ones. This next one's called An Ass of Infinite Holding. Now, you know, we have our stories here about people who go to prison who are caught with an amazing assortment and amount yeah. of things in their, in their, uh, their Random asses. Random orifices. Yes. Orifices. Um, but orifices. this person has officially broken the record. Wow. And uh, it's in New Jersey. Yeah. Uh, of course it is. baby. Fucking our, crazy between ass. taxes and car insurance, we're, we don't even feel it. You could shove a <laughs> personal computer up there. We wouldn't even notice. Like, was oh, that a Mac? Oh, yeah. Oh, Dude, yeah. It feels like a, an iBook. Oh, oh, this is nice. Uh, Razul Spite, a blood gang member, is facing a narcotics charge after New Jersey police yesterday discovered a whopping 100 bags of heroin hidden inside of his anus. Wow. That's another one. You almost want to be like, well, good, good job. Know, let him keep it. That's yeah. uh, he's breaking bad in his ass. So way to go. Yeah, a, can you imagine being the cop that's pulling those out. One, <laughs> well, two. You, I think three. at that point you'd have to do it like the count from Sesame Street. Wow. <laughs> one, one, one bag, bag of heroin. anal heroin. Ah, ah, have ah. some fun. String them up and beat them like a pinata. <laughs> See what kind of drugs fall out. <laughs> Look at all the heroin coming out of this guy. No, no, they're not L.A. cops. Come oh on. yeah, you're right. Good point. <laughs> <laughs> like how they beat him, it's like fucking San Andreas. His dollar signs appear over his head. Oh, fuck. Uh, Spite, age 32, was driving on a Palisades Interstate Parkway when his 2005 Mitsubishi Lancer was pulled over during a routine traffic stop. When police detected the smell of marijuana, they asked for and received permission to search the car. While investigators found nothing of evidentiary value inside the vehicle, Spite uh, and his passenger, Gally Silak, age 25, were both arrested due to outstanding traffic warrants. Ah, yes. So, you know, if you're going <laughs> to be transporting before. drugs, don't have fucking people who have warrants... Drive around illegally, smelling of marijuana. That's so stupid. Which is why, Pete, I would like to start, and if you're interested in being, getting on board on the ground floor with this, a white boy drug transporting service where white people in completely legal cars who don't really do drugs transport with no criminal record, immediate criminal records or pressing words, transport your drugs for you. We, and, you know, we'll drive the speed limit, 45, mile, 45 miles an hour if it's 50. And we'll follow all the traffic laws, and we'll never get pulled over. And That's we could true. have six hundred thousand metric tons of drugs in the car. It could be like e- even in the back seat, just like in shopping just bags, sitting there, yeah, sitting the there, over it, and like mm-hmm. you know. And we would be so totally fucking fine. We could totally do this, and it would be no problem at all. Yeah, I would. But, uh, I would totally go all transporter on it. Uh, now, now, while Spite was being processed at police headquarters, he was found to be in possession of 100 bags of heroin, which were concealed in his anus and undetectable at the original scene. Police estimated the heroin's value at $1,000 in New York City and $2,000 in upstate New York. Oh, so, ooh, apparently. That's where they were going. My brain immediately went like, like that Spore video game where you get the red spice and it's dirt cheap here, but you go like two systems over, <laughs> and it's like ten times its value. Yep. <clears throat> Except I don't think the aliens transport the spice in their ass. Probably not. Uh, Spite, who police noted is also listed as a Bloods gang member, was jailed in lieu of $30,500 bail on a pair of felony drug counts. That's a very specific... Why tack on the $500? Or why not round up the 39 It's arbitrary. Yeah, it's whatever the fuck they say it is. They come up with some random shit. I love... You know, they say... No, it's a bail set by... No, it's not set by people because we would make it something... Because then it would be like murder, it's really high. Child molestation, it's $200 gajillion. Yeah. Traffic offenses or, or marijuana, it's $13. Bucks. $13. $13. Yeah. $13. So, uh, but then like, no, we can't do that. Uh, hey. Dumbass criminals, Pete. Uh, my favorite kind. 
uh, Lee Wildman, age 35, and Adrian Stanton, age 32, pleaded guilty in connection with a burglary at, at uh, Durham Jesus, University in England. Jesus, Jesus, or- Jesus. <laughs> Oriental <laughs> Museum. God, that's weird. <laughs> Even hearing it now is kind of creepy. No wonder the guy took off. In which they, yeah. they heisted artwork worth the equivalent of uh, $2.7 million. Wow. You and don't they, get to hear about any good yeah. like, art heists. Yeah. And that's like something that was really popular in the 80s and shit. There was always people stealing priceless art in the 80s and early 90s. Not so much anymore. No. And uh, they hid it in a field. In April 2012. You need too much startup cash. However, they have been unable to help authorities locate the bounty, even with the <laughs> reward of sentence reduction, because they have forgotten where they stashed it. <laughs> so this Morons. priceless art, this this monument to human achievement. A million dollar piece of art is, is lost due to this fucking I mean, stupidity. E- even if it wasn't worth, it didn't have a, an intrinsic, it didn't have a dollar value, it still has an intrinsic value, it still has a value of culture. Mm-hmm. Which you know what I mean? And they left it in a fucking field, man. Come yeah, you on, you know that shit's ruined. Um, eventually, hikers unconnected with the case discovered it, notified police. Said <laughs> Judge Christopher Prince, uh, "This is not an offense that can be described as sophisticated." <laughs> yeah, you think? In the understatement of England, BBC News. Ah, uh, this next one, Pete. I saved it at for last. Okay, must be a good one. And uh, the title, I thought of you, Pete. It's called Aww. I Cast Magic Missile. <laughs> March 13th, a Georgia woman and her adult daughter yesterday went to a sheriff's office to report that the younger woman's ex husband had cast a spell on her in her home, investigators report. <laughs> yes. Go on. <laughs> <laughs> Just continue. <laughs> oh, God. The duo lodged their complaint Tuesday afternoon. <laughs> They're a duo. <laughs> With the uh, Barrow County Sheriff's Office, according to the incident report uh, authored by Deputy D. Boyd, Michia Vang and her daughter, Pang Kang, which uh, is so totally amazingly. Yeah. So, so it's, wait a minute. So it's Pang Kang Vang? Holy shit. And so, that's young, a hell of a drug. And her younger brother, Chain Gang. Uh, <laughs> and char- Bing Bok Bang Gang. <laughs> You guys are making it up. What the hell? Charged that Vang's former spouse had placed her and her Vinda Georgia residence under a spell or spells. Ah. Bruce Lohr, Vang's 28-year-old former spouse, reportedly did this with the assistance of his mother, who is not named in the report. So he had help. To support their claim, Vang and Kang... The Van Kang gang stated that they believe <laughs> they believe this because Mr. Lohr was able to know what they do and where they go. Additionally, uh-huh. Lohr's purported spell caused Mrs. Vang's recent health issues, alleged the pair. Deputy Boyd noted that Vang and Kang stated these issues have been going on for the past year since, since her divorce. Uh, since there was not much Boyd could do to investigate the purported spell casting... <laughs> He advised Bang that, quote, a report will be written documenting, documenting the incident. Uh, his report added, there is no audio or video of this incident, mm-hmm. a.k.a. there's no fucking evidence <laughs> for your imaginary bullshit. Wow. But um, the, I filled out a report for you. There you go. Okay, lady. And that is our weird Bang Bang Gang Bang <laughs> news. <laughs> Wow. Ding, dingly dang. A dingly dang. Ding, a ding dang dong. That's almost... A ding dang dong. <laughs> it's like, it's like so they, they had like, at the hospital, like, what do we name our child? We're legitimately oh. oriental. Pang jang gang. Let's, let's have an American or American janitor just spout some Chinese gibberish at us. <laughs> and we'll just, what should we name our child? I don't know. Bang yang jang. That's perfect, Sounds actually. Great. That means beautiful sunrise in Korean. That's so... Uh, Thoughtful, thank you. I always fuck with the Spanish people at work. I'm like, stop speaking that Korean. Korean? <laughs> <laughs> or fuck, you know, you want to fuck with them? Tell a Puerto Rican you don't speak Mexican and they freak the fuck out. <laughs> awesome. I had a good moment uh, at, uh, at the job. Same day that the kid cried and went home. <laughs> we were sitting around with one of the more, uh, 
one of the one of the Spanish guys is funny as hell. He reminds me of a, a chubbier Spanish Brett Bechtel, this guy. Okay. Because he's obnoxious like Brett and just kind of generally awesome. hilarious. It looks like him too, but slightly more Puerto Rican. <laughs> he's a, a, a little Spanished up. Yeah. So with, we were like, we had like half an ounce of downtime. So this dude, I was like putting tags on something and a um, dude was like, oh, it go, went up to the guy who was working across from me. And it was, they were talking about something like I had to do. I wasn't paying attention yeah. until he goes, oh, yeah, you know, I got a knife. I turn around and go, you're Spanish. Of course you have a knife. <laughs> he was like, yo, that's fucked up, bro. I was like, but but you have a knife. Yeah. <laughs> so it's accurate. See, he thought it was funny. <laughs> when racial stereotypes are, are like dead on unapologetically accurate. It's funny. Just because not like this, the easy to like the easy physical attribute ones. It's like. Latin people dance when they hear a beat, you know, or, uh, you know, uh, uh, white people are hardworking or, uh, I don't know, I don't really know any uh, uh, white people yeah. negative uh, uh, attributes. We can't dance. So you see, yeah. me da- you see me dance. White men can't jump. You, you know that you, you're like, oh, that stereotype is totally fucking justified. My, like, my, uh, my oldest 13-year-old, she's, like, been in dance since she was three. She's, like, huge into dance. And so... Uh, I'll talk to her and I'll say I'll start mentioning bullshit dance moves and I'll like <laughs> do the most outrageous dance moves at all. Like I'll do, um, it's it's called silverware in the garbage disposal, and she's like <laughs> she's like what's that? And I you put your hands up in the air and you you wiggle your fingers, right, and jazz you, hands. You jump up and down. And you go ding 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 ding, and, uh, and, it's, and it's perfect. Um, or I'll do like uh, I'll do one uh, and you chante. Shantae. Oh, yeah. Shantae, 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 and do all these ridiculous things. And she just laughs because, <laughs> it's, because well, you know, you're it's fucking it, ridiculous. Because yeah. <laughs> I'm a 30 year old white man acting like a fucking fool. So, uh, wow, I just summed up my entire life. Awesome. And uh, we learned a lot today. We learned um, StarCraft II. Uh, kind of a disappointment. was a disappointment. One. We learned that Pete is hungover. Yep, drinking car bombs, <clears throat> not a good idea. And uh, yeah, he should have stuck to beer. Uh, I was, we learned that if you are getting, if you are in a, ha- having a home invasion occurring, yeah, and just you're with start several people, just start Jesus. saying Jesus, 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 over awesome. and over and over again. And I might th- just start doing that to people randomly because it's creepy as shit. <laughs> <clears throat> and just, and just, but when you do it, like do it like a pentagram or something, or just do it like with the devil horn sign, just to really yeah. throw them. They're like. Ah. <laughs> Somebody's all up in my zone at work, and I want them to leave. Like Jesus, 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 Jesus. and then they'll be really uncomfortable <laughs> because you're doing it with the devil horn saying, "You're like, well, I wasn't doing it right. <laughs> I was trying to cover all my bases." <laughs> or you just do it with devil horns while praying to Mecca. <laughs> oh, triple threat! Oh snap! But, but, uh, excuse me, which way is east? <laughs> yeah, we learned uh, we learned a lot of interesting things. Um, we learned uh, that being a home- hangover sucks. We we covered that. Yep. Uh, we learned I worked a lot of overtime. We covered that. Yep. And we learned um, Mormons are fucking crazy. Mormons are fucking crazy. Uh, I'd say they're a cunt hair away from being fucking Scientologists. Yeah, it really seems weird. like it's pretty much just the same thing with uh, with uh, magic underwear. Yeah, that's a, that, that's the only thing. That's the thing that might be the deciding factor. That could be the vagina hair that we set on the scales. That could make Mormons be a little weirder. But then you take the blink, you pluck the vagina hair, trying not to set off the fucking 22 Damn fucking it. five shot. <laughs> and you, you take that, and then you, have, you put it on the Scientologist side because that was created like close, like closer to modern times. Yeah. You know, that's, so you set that on one. there, and it's like, oh, it's a delicate balance. One more weird thing we discover about them, and we'll decide which of them is the most retarded and weird. <laughs> <clears throat> right now, it's still technically Scientology. Yep. But Mormons are right up their fucking. They're they're close. It's it's a photo finish. It's a photo it, finish. Yeah, it, it is awfully uh, awfully neck and neck. Right? Yes, neck and, and neck. Nose. Um. Uh, yes. Yes. So uh, our subdued uh, our subdued podcast. Uh, it wasn't too bad though. We had some weird news. Some some funny stuff. Some yeah, bizarre. I apologize for being all hungover, but I wanted yeah, to Pete, come Pete's tell hung stories. Pete's hungover, and I'm tired from like my one day off. I am wearing pajamas. I am totally in I my pajamas. I almost did. I was about to be like, fuck it. <laughs> but I'm like, eh, it could be cold. Put yeah. on jeans. And it's not as cold as it has been. No, it's not too bad. It's, uh, uh, oh, soccer pajamas made me on. <laughs> That's a perfect <laughs> way to end it. So, uh, <clears throat> and it gives us uh, our... 
are... Someone's screaming outside. Yeah. They're screaming. Yeah, so let's like children. let's end this before we're overrun by fucking zombies. <laughs> you been listening to That's Life, a Baby Boy production, episode number 57. 57. Woo, we're getting up there. Thank you so much for listening. You can listen to any of the season two episodes Pete has posted. Pete? On the YouTubes, I think. For free oh, yeah. at the YouTube channel, youtube.com forward slash That's Life Podcast. That's youtube.com forward slash That's Life Podcast. Check it out. There's some funny stuff there. To listen to or download any of the season one through three episodes, also Pete's for free. That's right. Check us out at That's Life Podcast.com. That's Life Podcast.com. Be sure to subscribe, subscribe, and, and Pete's subscribe for instant bitches. notification by email whenever new episodes are posted. And Pete, tell them about that super awesome Facebook page. You can also find out when new episodes are posted thanks to our Facebook page. Oh, which yes. Is Facebook.com slash That's Life Podcast. Uh, go there for notifications, uh, again, updates on when episodes are being recorded, when they're posted. Give, give us a like. Give us a share. Ask us your questions. Uh-huh. And uh, maybe we'll answer them on the show. Or at least make fun of you for having silly questions. One or the other. Um, so, yeah, tell a friend and help us help you laugh like idiots. Woo! And if you've enjoyed what you've just heard. And know you have. Well, of course they have. Be sure to tell a friend, a neighbor, or coworker, and help us to spread the laughter as far as we can. So from all of us here at That's Life, this has been Pete and Carl, bidding you an adieu, an adieu, and a magic underwear adieu. So hungover. Jesus, Jesus, <laughs> Jesus, Jesus. <laughs>